What is the most fricked up thing you've seen your parents do? Stepmom purposely falsely accused me twice of stealing from her. First time she told me she was going to do it to get my dad to cut off paying for my college and kick me out, it worked. Second time she accused me of what would have been a felony amount to try to get me thrown in jail luckily it didn't work out for her that time. Mom threw a butcher knife at my stepdad and it stuck in the wall next to his head. Once while my sister and I were upstairs, my parents were fighting really loud downstairs. Suddenly, we hear complete silence. My C's and I came out of our rooms at exactly the same time to go see what was going on. We rushed down the stairs and saw my father choking my mother. She stayed with him for approximate 10 years after that. Oh, and the day after that happened, we all went on a happy vacation with my mother pretending nothing had happened and instructing us to do the same. Edit. Thanks all for the replies with well wishes, shared stories and words of encouragement. It's been overwhelming. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your comment. At a certain point, I had to step away from it. I hope you all understand. My mom threw a whole pizza in the garbage when my brother and I were arguing about it. My little mind damn near exploded. My dad intentionally set his hand on fire to demonstrate that whatever fluid he was using burns with a cold flame. He was normally a very smart, level aided person, I swear. I caught a lake turtle on my fishing line as a kid. We tried to get the hook out, but the unfortunate thing had swallowed it whole. My poor dad couldn't figure out what to do. We tried to kill it with a pellet gun, but it wasn't a powered and didn't even break the skin. Eventually he sent me inside the house and said he's take care of it. I was bawling and couldn't pull myself away. Saw him pick up a cinder block and smash it to death with 3 to 4 blows before kicking the remains into the lake. Horrible. I hated him for it at the time. But looking back on it now, as I'm now close to the age he was at the time. I really feel bad for him. I don't know that he had much else of a choice and I'm sure it rattled him just as much as it did me. Not as bad as other stories, but I remember my mom taking me to see her lover and forcing me to wait in the car for hours. I remember them having six on the kitchen counter behind us while we were having breakfast before school. One year they got a massive tub of chocolate as they were into eating foods off each other, but they hated it, so us kids had chocolate body spread sandwiches for nearly a year it was a huge tub. When they got into fights it would turn into a throwing match. My mum dented the double glazed window with a frying pan it is possible, and to this day at least 15 years later she still has the pan in question. They'd once redecorated the lounge, and about a week later were so drunk they got into an argument which resulted in my mum throwing her plate of salad at my stepdad, getting mayo and lettuce leaves on the wall, and I vaguely remember it still being stuck to the wall six months later. When my stepdad fell asleep on the sofa downstairs, she'd turn the bible channel on or any other religious channel put the TV on full blast, and take the remote to bed with her, so he couldn't change it. My mom held a gun to her head when I was 8, threatening suicide. When I ran over to her, crying, trying to stop her, she pointed the gun right at my forehead and told me to get away. Never been more scared in my life. She also shot a gun off in the house a few weeks later, had several ropes tied into nooses hanging in her closet, wrote several suicide notes, and would basically threaten to end her life whenever something inconvenienced her. Luckily she's sober and much more stable now, but we don't have a good relationship, and I'm still terrified of her to this day. When I was like 11 I saw them doing drugs in their bedroom. Middle of the day no consideration for me at all. It scared me half to death, because they both got zombie like on whatever it was. When I was a little kid, probably around 10, my mom told me to send her checkbooks in the mail that belonged to my grandmother. My mom didn't live with us, and she told me that my grandmother had asked me to send them since she was out of town, so I did. I later got sat down by my grandmother, and she was furious with me for sending the books. My mother had apparently done this in order to commit fraud, and had drained my grandmother's life savings from close to a million dollars down to nothing. I got blamed for it until my grandmother passed away. One of her last conversations with me at age 24 was her still expressing her disappointment in me for sending the books. 
My mother denies the whole thing to this day. I was about 9. There was a performance at the school. I was in the choir. My dad dropped me off and picked me up afterwards. When I was picked up, I found out I was in huge trouble. He absolutely unleashed on me, closed fist, kicked me, threw me against the wall, broke furniture. Grown man strength versus a 9 year old. Jeez. To this day I remember just curling up in a ball and him wailing on me. For weeks I had no idea what I had done. My offense, my shirt was untucked when he picked me up. To him it meant I was running around raising hell while unsupervised. Actually, it was the choir's costume. We were farm people singing tunes from Oklahoma. My parents gave my older sister up to child services because they didn't want to take care of her anymore. Yeah, how did it end up like that? Is the problem with your sister causing problems? Or were it your parents who just cold parent? Or is it just that your parents just didn't want to because they just didn't want to? If so, any idea why? Im curious said it, a typo. Im going to bypass the duck shoot and relate one I find hilarious to this day. Most of my friends avoided coming to my front door my dad was scary shoot. One of my good guy friends, however, was so mellow and unfazed by literally anything. He would knock on the door as opposed to my window. He was around 65 and goofy looking. So, he decided to dye his hair bright manic panic grin his eyebrows. It was raining out. He knocked on our front door and my dad opened it. He stared, silently, for nearly a minute, taking in the full effect of my giant green buddy whose skin was now quite green too. My dad was really stoned, as opposed to the more typical less mellow things he usually went for. Finally, he just came and got me and said underpants bandit, there's a jolly green giant here to see you, and left the room. The next day he asked if, in fact, my buddy was actually the jolly green giant, or if he was hallucinating. My sister and I had a bed in my mother's room. She slept with her boyfriend on that bed. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw them having sex. Another time, I had woken up and gone downstairs. Asked her boyfriend the same one from earlier where my mother was. He lifted up his chin and there was a cut all the way across his neck. I later found out that my mom went to jail for 27 days. I've also seen my mom going after my current stepfather with a knife. Good thing we had a room at. I think it was probably sitting in a chair with a wooden spoon when I was about 5, screaming at me to come to her so she could beat me with it. The kind of scream where they turn red in the face, their expression is so distorted it barely looks human. Their throat gets so tight from the level of screaming they sound different. I just remember standing there in front of her crying and froze when I didn't go to her she started hitting herself with the wooden spoon on her leg, screaming as she did it. When it snapped in half on her leg, she started hitting herself and pulling at her own hair. She had a wooden spoon shaped bruise perfectly shaped out on her leg and I remember a few days later when I saw it and said something she said that's because of you. That's what you did. I'm pretty sure it was because I didn't want her to brush my hair. I can't really remember. My brother never experienced any of this. I always copped it when I was home alone with her. But out of everything she ever said to me and still does, that was the most frick thing I've seen her do. Mom threatened to shoot herself. Over the new dog crapping on the carpet. She's a very all or nothing woman. Her sound for I'm struggling with the peanut butter jar is the same as her sound for someone is currently being murdered. Might have to do with the depression and anxiety that she passed on to me. My stepfather groping my girlfriend's breasts. I complained but my mother told me not to be so jealous. They might as well have given me a brochure of headstones, saying thief decided to both be dead to me. My stepdad threatened to kick me and my sister out of the house along with all the other stuff if my mom left on a business trip that would secure her job and make her self-dependent. I told her to leave because it was important that she go and do this for herself. He indeed kicked us out after I came back from the airport. He took the ski rack he helped buy off the car and moved all of the furniture, throwing anything in a public space or their room into the garage or my sister's room. I began secretly loading the car with essentials like our personal files and birth certificates. 
I also grabbed the PS4 he bought me to prevent him from abusing my account. My puppy was still on worms treatments, but he said he would take her back if we left her, so we had to put her in her crate where she had bad diarrhea. I took essential clothes and school stuff and tried to take my violin. However he spotted me when I went to head downstairs and ran in front of me. I had paid for half of the $1,500 instrument, but he helped pay for the rest and claimed it was his. I tried to keep it from him, which became a wrestling match between my 5ft4, 117 pound self, and his 220 pound 6 feet self. He eventually reached past me and grabbed the strap, ripping the handle I was holding off of the case. We left shortly after, seeking refuge at neighbors for 3 days. I had to hide my car in a parking lot a ways away, so he wouldn't try to steal it. I did eventually get the violin back, but he destroyed the house and put a 3 inch radius hole in the stairway wall and kicked and punched the bathroom door in my mum's room, destroying it and ripping it off the hinges. I have never been so terrified of a guardian before. She got divorced from him a month later. Edit, TLDR, my stepdad kicked me and my C's out of the house, taking a lot of our stuff while my mum was out of town. My parents go in an argument, like I'm sure a lot of couples do. But it just kept escalating, voices raising, eventually it ended up in screaming match. My mom took the phone off the hook, and threw it at my dad. He caught it just before it hit his face, and then he got right in my mom's face, and screamed at her. She then started smacking him, and screaming at him. At the time I thought that was how couples argued. Then I saw my wife's parents get in an argument. She said it was one of the worst she had ever seen, and they were barely one tenth of the yelling my parents had got anyway. This has led to a lot of issues with my wife, she thinks I'm yelling at her when I'm in my mind barely raising my voice. She always thought I was crossing a line, while I thought I was holding back. Then about 6 months ago she saw my mom and I get in a fight. I'm not even sure what it was over, but I had to resort to yelling to get my point across, and catching random shoots she threw at me. After that my wife understood, that when I get stern and don't yell, and don't throw shoot, I'm holding back. I'm trying the hardest, to not end up like my mom. Get lifted up 3 feet off the ground by my neck, when I was 9, because I tried to defend my mom from drunk dad beating her. My parents divorced, when I was 7 my father died, when I was in my early 20 she left me 5 dollars and his will, that was fine, I wanted nothing to do with him from the time I was 7. The courts revoked his visitation, when I was 13. I saw him 3 times from a distance between 13 and 18 and didn't speak to him. We never got in contact again. My mom wanted me to get a lawyer, contest his will, and turn over the money to her, because she felt she was due on account of her crappy marriage and lousy divorce settlement her sisters agreed. My dad has very bad road rage, when I was about 8 he got us into an accident on porpoise, just to get back at the person for getting into the turning lane in front of the neighborhood he was trying to get out of, my dad swerved in front of traffic and hit the guy from behind. I still hate being in the car with him. My mum cheated on my dad, when I was 5 yo. I remember seeing the guy, and mum saying don't tell dad. To save the marriage they moved states, and my dad still kept his same job 150k salary in the 90s, and came home in the weekends. Of course mum found someone else to cheat with, while dad was at work. He got her all the new cars, and started her a business. But still she was committed to cheating. They divorced. During the custody court case she lied in court say my dad graped me, and my sister same mum. Different dad my dad was trying to get custody of my sister even though she wasn't his own. He knew she was better off with him. The case destroyed my dad, lost his job, house money etc. Mum remarried and had more kids with the new guy. Fast forward 10 years. And she cheats on him with his best friend. Told my sisters don't tell dad. She broke the news on my birthday, which was the same day as my final exams. They go to court for custody. Can you guess what happens next? She said my stepdad graped her and my sisters. Utter bullshit. He can only visit with a police officer present. These are examples of what she has done to people in my life. I could write a book about the shoot she has done to me personally. Welp, when I was about 10 me and my aunt took cousins and my mom went to this water park. 
My older cousin had gone off with her friend and me my mom and my younger cousin went to go on a ride and my aunt was sitting by the wave pool. When me, my mom, and younger cousin got to the slide he got scared. He told my mom that he wanted to go back to his mom. My mom then started going ballistic on him and cussing at him and shooting that scared him even more. So he ran off to his mom. Well my mom grabbed me and we went to find him. We found him with my aunt, and without her saying anything my mom then started cussing her out and threatening her, saying that my cousin was a little posse, and she was gonna kill her, because he ran away. That just scared him even more, and he started crying. We got kicked out the park, and the whole 45 minute ride home she was just talking more shoot. After that my mom cut my aunt off, it's been 9 years, and they still haven't talked. When I was in 3rd maybe 4th grade, I was crying in my room on the bed, because my mom wouldn't let me go to a neighbor's house. She then proceeded to take a pillow from my bed, and hold it over my face, attempting to suffocate me. Luckily, I was smart enough to hold my arms over my face, to keep her from doing it. I still hate her for that till this day and I'm 16. She wonders why I don't love her the way I do my dad. I have really low blood pressure and high anxiety slash stress. This was also when I was struggling with an eating disorder and hardly ate anything. I got into an argument with my mother about something incredibly stupid, probably about how I left a crumb on the counter when I wiped it down or something, and started telling my mother I felt faint and was struggling to stand. My mom screamed at me to leave her room and get ready for school. I left her room and promptly fainted, hitting my head on the corner of a wall and knocking myself out cold. When I woke up minutes later I couldn't move my legs or my arms and began screaming for my mom to help me, sobbing loudly and begging for her to help. My mom opened the door, looked down at my crying, begging body unable to move on the floor and said you're always so freaking dramatic. Before slamming the door in my face, I had a severe concussion. My mom and dad have been divorced since I was one, and despite the fact that I spent approximately an equal amount of time with each of them through my childhood, my mother's house was my legal residence, so I went to school in the town she lived in. During my 8th grade year, I began living with my dad full time due to years of abuse and neglect by my mom. That following summer my mother moved without telling anyone, leaving me and my dad to either move to the town where my mom lived which had a great school system and all my friends, or stay where we lived in the most drug infested town in the county with a considerably worse school system. My dad and I had to find a place and move in less than 2 months. It's odd how this thread has made me feel a little less alone my father held my mother down and screamed in her face because she didn't pay a bill threw her backwards into a glass door because he thought she was cheating, shoved me through drywall because I clenched my fist while I was being yelled at, swung at me for trying to leave during an argument, kicked me out repeatedly throughout my entire childhood my mom stays with him. Still, she acts as if he is the perfect human being. Maybe he has changed, but I still don't trust him. Not my story but my husband's. At 6 years old he had a loving relationship with his dog Star. The stories has told me about her really light up his eyes. He loved her so so much. But Star was getting old, and he could tell. There had been some talks of taking her to the vet, to be euthanized but nothing ever came of it. One day he heard a scuffle in the shed, and peeked his head around the corner of the door, only to see his mother hanging his dog from a beam. This is always the story that kills the light in his eyes when he talks about her. Him begin to rescuing and fostering dogs, so this story really tears me up every damn time. My parents divorced when I was very young, after having 5 kids together. I grew up with my mum and a stepfather, barely making ends meet. However, as I grew up there were multiple really strange occurrences. Like our house being covered in paint, our car being vandalized, that kind of thing. As a kid I never really thought too much about it, because it seemed pretty normal. Years go by, and I'm 18, and living with my dad and brother, before finding out that my dad was behind all the crazy shoot that had happened to us growing up. Amongst other shoot I found out later, he snuck into my grandmother's house and killed her pet birds, slitting their throats and leaving their corpses in the sink anyways. The real shoot show came when my older brother got diagnosed with leukemia. 
he eventually died from it at age 24, and I witnessed my dad do the most fricked up thing ever. He didn't let my mum in the funeral car to her own son's funeral. Despite promising my bro that he would get along with her now. Needless to say, I left that brick high and dry and hope he dies alone. Edit, the same grandmother was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor, and as she's deteriorating she's been letting information out without realizing it. Stuff she's been hiding for ages. Just found out my dad has been harassing her for money for years. Scaring her into giving it to him. She's got no savings. She's in massive debt and none of us realized they were even still in contact. It's not even his mother. Lesson, IDK, some people are just screwed in the head. My father beating and choking out my mother. Not just once but many many times. I'm 38 and I still have not recovered. Saw my dad kill a dog with a hose because he was always fighting with the other dog. Saw him drown a cat in a 5 gallon bucket, not sure why, and saw him possibly beat a person to death. I was young, around 8, and he stopped at a bar, and fought a guy right out front with me sitting in the car. He got the guy on the ground, and just kept pounding his face, until he wasn't moving. Got back in the car with blood all over him, and his hands all messed up. We went to my grandparents house right after, then stayed at one of his friends house for about a week then moved far away from that state. He told me later in life, that it was a random guy, that just tried to jump him, and he just defended himself. He also very seriously told me, that I can never go back to that state. Okay, so this isn't particularly fricked up, but it's funny. My mom who is a nurse, had to do an interview with some back quote businessman. For some reason, she had to record the whole thing in secret. She used a ballpoint pen that was actually a voice recorder. I never found out why she recorded that interview. To this day, I wonder if my mom is actually a nurse or not. Ask me if I was hitting on him when he was high on meth. Because if you are, that's okay. What? The FCK. I will shoot on his grave and that is the next time he will see me. It's been almost 2 years and I still get sick thinking of that. Mom told me at 15, when we reconnected after 12 years, that this local guy was hot, but such a sleazebag, that her posse couldn't get wet enough to let him in. I don't talk to her either.